Have you ever wanted to create a type of texture that's so pliable and easy to create a sense of movement? This is a great way to do it, just by using scatter, what we refer to as scatter graduation within the rectangle area. So in the past, I've worked with you where we've taken horizontal sections, working across, left to right, right to left, the rectangle. And then working from short to long, short to long, short to long, alternating every other section. Today, what we're going to recommend is we're going to work vertically within two separate areas. So you're going to take your rectangle section, you're going to divide that in half. You're going to work in the center back area first, and you're going to work with a vertical section down the center. So we go with a vertical section. Then once we have the vertical section, now what we're going to do is we're simply going to cut short to long. The next vertical section, we're going to over direct to the center and go short to long the opposite way. Next vertical section, over directed to the center, elevated and over directed to the center to create short to long. Let's get started. Okay, I'll give you a profile view of the angle. I'm going to tilt her head. Now look how by tilting her head, look how easy it makes for me to get to this angle. Now look at the degree of shortness. So I want some of this hair having some personality to it. I actually want it to have some movement and actually just pop up, intermixed with long hair. How are we going to do that? First section, vertical, horizontal now to the path of your eye. Short, your entry point, short. And once again, roll my left hand so I capture the hair and maintain my tension. Okay, now this is my first section. So I'm simply going to take this section, take a clip, and place the clip right in that section. Now that also is going to represent my over direction point. Next vertical section. Now I'm going to over direct to the center and I'm going to go short to long the opposite way. Because I'm right handed, watch what I'm going to do. Simply turn the chair and now that allows my right hand to be in the proper position where I want. Short to long and it's going to pop up. You can't be afraid of it. That's exactly what I'm looking for within this personality. Okay, take my clip and then once again just clip that. Now that lets me know where I'm at. Let's tear in the chair the opposite direction. Okay, take a horizontal section to the path of your eye now. If I'm staying in the center back and looking at the section, vertical to my path of the eye. Now we come through, tilt your head, over direct to the clip, now go short to long again. So what I'm doing is I'm actually building some length, throwing some length and weight to the outside of it, even though I'm working extremely short. Okay, now once I'm there, take the section again, my last section. And what do I have to do before I cut? Just simply take and rotate the chair. So I rotate the chair, opposite direction. Comb, over directed to my clip, that's the center. Now we go short to long. Okay, now leave my clip here. This knows that that is my center point. So I can at least see that center point. Now think about what I did. The first section I cut in the center was short to long. So I need to make short to long the opposite. So you've got to have a good memory for this and remember where you're going. Remember, controlled chaos, not chaos. So now we come through. Let's take a look. Here's the side that I'm cutting. Opposite side of the rectangle, taking horizontal path to the path of our eye at the moment. Let's lay this down so you can see it. Remember, I want this hair popping up. We can control that in our blow dry too, no concerns. Coming through, short, and once again, just nice, smooth strokes. More of a medium stroke than it is a short stroke. Okay, and getting to my length. Now think about where I'm at here. Okay, where you're standing will tell you what direction you've actually cut. So if you want to, point the direction. I went short to long, so point the clip in that direction. That will remind you when to short to long that direction. So now when I turn her this direction, I know that I want my clip to point the opposite direction. So use your clip as a means of you controlling the sections. Remember, it's difficult because a lot of times you could be consulting or having a conversation with a client and forget the direction you're going. Once again, over direct and elevate to the center, working short to long. Next section. Take my clip, reverse the clip if you want. Remember, allows it to tell me the direction that we just cut. So now I want to cut the opposite direction. Take a section, come through, working with the fine teeth, 
because we're graduating the hair, white comb because we're working with a dark level of color. So you have the contrast and the control of seeing the extension of the line. Every section I cut, just come back through, reverse your clip opposite direction. By turn, simply turning the chair, you should be able to control the directions that you're cutting. Notice the palm of my hand is facing me. Gives us a lot more control of the section we're cutting and how we're cutting it. Come through and short to long. Okay, now we're gonna go into the front area. You're gonna repeat the same procedure. So let's just eliminate all of this. Get all of this just to sit. So we can see the square that we're working with in that front area. Okay, now we're gonna come through. We're gonna start in the center area. So I go center first. Okay, take a slice in the center. Now I'm gonna turn. I'm gonna go on her left shoulder. So my first section now is gonna go short. Disregard what you just did in the back half of the rectangle. Tilt the head so you get to the proper degree of elevation. Palm and hand facing up rather than facing down. You're gonna have more control of your razor being able to see the edge that you're creating. And once again, we're gonna go short to long. Sam, how do I control the angle in terms of the length? Stop overthinking it. In order, other words, in order to create texture, you really have to have a loose mindset. So I don't want you to be so precise with everything. I think balance and function are the two primary things that a haircut needs to have, but start to loosen up your mindset in regards to the precision of it. Think more balance and function. Now watch what I'm gonna do. Now I'm gonna go short to long, opposite direction. Sam, extremely short of the fringe area. That's right, remember, look at the personality I'm working with. I could certainly leave this longer if I wanted to and still get some movement creating this whole concept of scattered graduation. Scatter your angle, one direction, the opposite, opposite direction. Short to long. Notice how I take each section I just cut, take it, I went short to long, see I just reversed that clip, that tells me pointing the direction is the direction of the angle that it went. Take my last section, okay, rotate the chair, over direct to the center, so I elevate and I over direct to that center. The tip of my finger is over that center, come right to that starting edge, my entry point. There really is no guideline, my friends, just relax. Okay, once we've got that side cut, take this side away, and now I'm ready to cut my opposite side. Think about where I started now. I started on her left shoulder, so my first angle was short to long. So now my next angle here needs to be short in the front to long in the back. So let's take our first section. Okay, our first section comes up. Tilt her head over so we can get to the sense of graduation. Come through, short to long. Take the clip, take my next section. There's my next section. I went short to long that direction. Here's my next section. Now I'm right-handed, turn the chair. So notice every section, every section the chair is turning. Now we're gonna go short to long, opposite direction. Believe it or not, my friends, I want this haircut to look, and excuse me for saying this, but to have the visual end result like she almost cut her hair herself if you think about it in terms of the texture and what we're gonna see. Okay, short to long, turn my clip around, take another section. Okay, I need to turn the chair. Sets up my right hand in the direction I'm gonna cut, short to long. Elevate to the center. Roll, okay, turn the clip around, short to long. Here's my last section. Then I'm gonna cut, so we're gonna turn around, and we're gonna work short to long. Now simply what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go in and blow dry. We're gonna work with our guts 10, create a little bit more, work with the mousse, create a little bit more volume, get a little bit more kind of texture out of it in terms of when we blow dry. Now watch what happens. When I take these clips up, out, there should be hair popping up all over, okay? So this is what I'm looking for. So I get just this texture that has this, that's just so loose, and you can just start to see it happening already. 
Okay, just a really nice sense of loose texture to it. But notice the length and the pliability it has at the same time. Just a great way to go in and create some texture. I don't know about you, but visually looking at it, I'm, I'm excited about it. All right, now let's go through and blow dry. So we're going to come through, apply our Guts 10. Okay, we worked with our Pillow Proof Primer. Going to work with our Guts 10. Okay, not working with it, a lot of it, coming through, and I'm just going to massage that in. When I blow dry this, I'm going to work more with my hands than anything. And now just start to look at the movement and the way that it works. And I should have this back just basically really popping up. So you can start to see it almost looks like we've freehanded this haircut, but we actually cut it in a very controlled way. All right, so let's pick up our blow dryer, and we're going to once again wrap dry it, work with our hands, and work with a paddle brush. Okay, now you can start to see how we've released our moisture. Work with my hands and with a paddle brush, product of choice, our Redken Guts 10. Okay, now what I love about this, guys, is when you just work with your hands, look at it pop. But what's so cool about this is you're gonna find there's long slices of hair intermixed with short slices of hair. I find that when I go through and I even out the graduation, you start slicing it like I used to in the past, it still seems a little bit heavy. You can just start to see the lightness that I get out of this in terms of how she can just massage it and you just get this texture that bounces to it. Okay, so the idea now is to go in and finish it with some products. So I'm gonna go through, place my blow dryer down, and then once again, blow dry as you go gives you an opportunity to really see where you want that to be. So I'm just gonna take my mess around 10. Imagine cream and a paste working together. Very, very small amount of it. You do not wanna use a lot of our mess around 10. So I go through and I'm just gonna emulsify. And just start to give it a little bit more tack to it and just start to move it around. And when I do, do this, I want you to just notice the grains of the hair. Look how you've got this shortness and then you've got this extreme amount of length. That's what's so great about going in and creating more of a scattered texture, if you will. So that's Mess Around 10, just a small amount of Mess Around 10. Then I'm gonna come through and then on Mess Around 10, I'm gonna take my 22, which is our shape fact factor, come through, now this is more, think of it, once again, cream in a paste, but with a lot more control, a lot more strength to that. And really warm these products up. Anytime you're working with a cream in a paste, warm it up in your hand, so you get a little bit more even distribution of product. And now you can just really start to see how I'm just playing with the hair and just working the texture in. Once I've got that in, then I can come through and just start to see as I work with it, where I might want to tweak the haircut. Just a small amount of my Shape Factor 22. Once again, really heating it up. Now I'm really going to work it more into the crown area. And just a really sense of nice, soft movement to that. Once again, these sides, they are tuckable or she can tuck these if she wants to. But another little shape that has a sense of double identity to it in terms of what you can do to that. I actually like that. And then once again, just massaging that crown area. So how did we cut the rectangle? The way that we cut the rectangle was we simply went through and we just worked with sections that were vertical, depending upon where you're looking at back view or from a profile view, sections that were a little bit more scattered graduation, short to long. So start in your center, split the rectangle in half, start with your back half. In the center, we went short to long, next section, short to long, from back to front, next section, front to back, within the back half area, short to long. Every section was over directed to the center. Remember, stay in control when you're doing this. Work in the front area. Once again, start in the center. We went from short to the back to long to the front, short to front, long to the back, short back, long front, short front, long back. Once again, every section over directed into the center. And then when you're done, you get this whole sense of pop to it. Just going in and just touching it with your hands, you can just start to see the texture she gets out of it. Once again, just another way to cut a rectangle and create a cool, wicked texture on top that gives you a little bounce.